Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our series is, uh, yeah, let's do it here. Our series are the last words of Christ, and, and, and we, we, we're really looking at those words in context. Uh, lots of times so you, we look at these last words, the words he spoke from the cross, and, and, and we take them out as if, they're, uh, as, as if they are standalone pieces, and we forget that the people who had walked with Jesus and heard Jesus and saw what Jesus did for three years, this flesh and blood reality, were hearing these words and were connecting them with things that they had lived through with him, and they had seen him done. They, they, they had seen what he had did, um, well, had done, there we go. And, and, and so this flesh and blood reality were tying to the words through, through these fine, fine actors. Here was John, right? Uh, and John had seen him heal and heal and heal there for, for everyone. Maybe he was thinking that when... Jesus was hanging on the cross. Maybe, go ahead. Maybe he was, he was thinking about all the people that Jesus had healed, this, this uh, uh, disciple who had this special relationship with Jesus, this special friendship, uh, and now there was no one to, to heal him, huh? to, to help him. And, and this third word of the cross is that he looks down and, and, and he sees his mother, and, 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 and he's, he, he's, he's looking down, and he sees with the mother, there's, there's four women there. There's Mary, his mother, and there is her sister, and Mary Magdalene, and another Mary, and they're kind of clumped together there. And there is John as well. Jesus is pretty much alone. Would you have been thinking about others? with the nails in your hands, with your back ripped apart and smacked against the wood, with the crown of thorns pushed in your head, would you have been thinking about others? When everyone around him was calling him out and making fun of him, and laughing at him, Come down from the cross if you're the son of God. Would you have been thinking about somebody else? As I take a step back and, and look at this flesh and blood scene, perhaps a good question is to say, is to think what John would have been thinking. What's Jesus going to do when he sees us? And he had all, had all that history uh, to, to look at. There, for three years, he had come to the hopeless and to the outcast and to the death, dead and to the dying, to, to, to the lepers and, and, and to those who had been pushed out of society because of their sin, the, 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 the sinners. He had, he had come to those that no one else would touch, and he had helped them to the hopeless ones, those who are absolutely alone, as he was right now. He would say in just a few words, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Absolutely alone. He had come to those who were alone to heal and help them. I want you to know this that he still comes to those who are alone through the cross. During Lent, we, we talk about that word repentance, and, and uh, uh, I, I think sometimes too often we think it means that oh, I'm supposed to be sorry. Yeah, maybe that's a, a little part of it, but really what the word means, the Greek word metanoieo, it means to change your mind. Where do you think Jesus isn't there for you in your aloneness? Where are those situations in your life that you think he must have turned his back on you or you don't even think about him being there with you? Maybe because you've screwed it up. You've fouled up. 
Or maybe because what you have to live through there. You, you just can't see how Jesus would let that happen. And so he must not be there for you. Here's the meto no eo, the first one tonight. Turn away from any thought, any place, or any darkness in your soul where you believe that you're all alone or where you're living as if you think you're all alone. The flesh and blood message of Jesus is that he steps into our world. Did you hear the readings tonight? I, I think it's good to clump some of those together. This is what he did. They were all trying to touch him because he was there for them. And he healed them. Where do you need to touch Jesus? He's stepping right into your soul by his spirit right now. To heal you in that place with his forgiveness and, and peace and love and power. There was, there was never any question what he would do for Mary. He would do for her what he would do for anyone who was alone and suffering. That's why he went the way of the cross. It was the message of the cross. He would help her. He says to John, dear woman, here is your son. And here, John, is your mother. Remember my dad, uh, for years, whenever he would get serious, he would say, now when I'm gone, I want you guys to take care of your mom. And then he would say, he'd pause. <laughs> my brother and I can do this really good. <laughs> say, uh, and then he would pause and say, and I want you guys to love each other too. <laughs> and he would say it over and over again. Some of that's going on here. But there's so much more. These words have a certain mystery to them. Mary's not alone. Her sister's with her, for goodness sakes. Does Jesus think her sister's going to let her go out on the streets? And his brothers are still alive. Later on, after the resurrection, two of his brothers that we know of became Christians. They were leaders in the church. The Apostle James in Jerusalem and the Apostle Jude who wrote the book of Jude. She wasn't alone. She had family. Lots of people were going to take care of her. So what's Jesus doing here? He's leaving her himself. John is taking his place. John will bring his presence to her life. In John, he gives his flesh and blood presence to his mother. Because John was family too. John was his brother, though not biologically, but in the eternal family of God. You see, that's what Jesus does. He gives us to each other. And in that giving, he gives himself. You are Jesus to your wife. You are Jesus to your husband. You are Jesus to your children. You are Jesus to your parents. You are Jesus to the neighbor next door. You are Jesus to the whole world. Every person who feels so alone 
We are called the body of Christ. He gives us to each other. And through that, he gives himself. And he gives us all to the world. And through that, he gives himself. Just as he did for Mary. Just as he's done for the whole world through the cross. Just as he did for three years with those people who were all alone in their suffering. It's what he does. And what he's continuing to do through you. Amen.